So, you know, it's really interesting. We've had a great trial in Miami, and we chose Miami because we know what the temperatures are in Miami. And we've seen great drink consistency. We've seen really good leverage on the ticket, and so we're seeing both food and beverages being ordered. We're seeing much larger ticket when we see a delivery from Starbucks, and we're really pleased that we're doing this partnership with Uber. We're learning a lot about the technology integration, and that's the real result here is just really making sure that the technology comes together, and then we deliver the best product for the customer. And you've also been working on this with Alibaba in China. What would you say are the biggest lessons learned in partnering with them on delivery overseas, and what are you using from that and applying here in the United States? So we're using a lot of the learnings from China in terms of things like packaging, in terms of not only that it's an automobile delivery, we're seeing that it's bicycle delivery as well. So we're understanding that very well. We're also understanding what is the offering. So should it be the full menu or what drinks do best, you know, when they have to be delivered? Uh, so I'd love to get your take on the state of the consumer. We have our own data out from CNBC today. It says optimism among consumers is down, but yet their spending is higher this holiday season. What's your take on the state of the consumer through the Starbucks lens? And are you concerned about a potential slowdown? So, you know, what we're seeing right now is that, you know, something like a Starbucks cup of coffee, which, you know, some assume is affordable luxury, um, we're really comfortable right now in this season. I will tell you one thing about our holiday season that we're in right now. We learned a lot from what we did last year, and we're really encouraged by the reusable red cup that we entered this year. We're doing marketing campaigns, and every time we see the Starbucks name mentioned in media, we get a pop in our performance. So we're really pleased with what we're seeing. So we're a little bit less concerned with the turndown that everyone's talking about. So guys, I know Morgan has a question for you back at the Stock Exchange. Morgan? Uh, yeah, Rosalind, I just want to dig into that a little bit more because we've seen such market volatility, and not just here in the U.S., but really globally. Does that have any impact on consumer confidence in terms of wanting to go out and spend money on, on a cup of Starbucks coffee, or is there a point at which it would? So when you look at what Starbucks is doing, particularly in China and in the U.S., is that we're still opening new stores. And in China, there is still a lot of addressable market for us to participate in. And so you'll see us be pretty bullish on the work that we're doing with new stores. We're adding delivery, which is all incremental business. And so at this time, there's opportunity for us to continue to grow. We're watching carefully some of the things that are happening globally. Uh, Roslyn. Uh, I wonder if uh, this new delivery offering, is it meant to be profitable on a per trip basis? Is it really going to earn you money on a, on a small ticket uh, or is it just a way to keep customers engaged and another element of convenience? So the question around is this a profitable opportunity for us, it's one of the things that we're evaluating because it does cost more to deliver coffee. But what I will see uh, and tell everyone is that you know we're seeing a expanded ticket, and that average ticket is really uh, what we need to see happen as we approach delivery. So we're encouraged right now, but we're actually monitoring that very carefully. Roz, we know you're uh, emphasizing both convenience with drive-through and mobile, but also experience. You've got this new roastery opening in New York City tomorrow. What do you think will be the biggest driver of growth for the bottom line for the company moving forward? The biggest driver for growth for us will be our beverage innovation. And so you saw us earlier this year introduce a new espresso. You'll see us bring more of our learnings from our roasteries in terms of what can happen with our beverage innovation. You'll see us talk more about our cold, our cold platform, things like our nitro cold brew, and then some of our other beverages that are really doing well for us right now.